Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. Tonight, we're at the Barring Up West Primary School. Now, you may remember a few weeks ago, I did a little bit of a feature of this place on one of my other videos when I was going around the countryside showing people uh, the calendars, etc. So, I've come back here and my intention tonight is to shoot star trails here. And what I'm going to do is go through the process of how I shoot them, how I set up, etc., how I light the building. Then I'm going to take you back to the studio. We're going to go through the processing of those images and blending them together, coming up with the final result. So, let's get into it. All right, so here we go. I've got my camera set up on a tripod quite low down to the ground here. What I'm using tonight is the Nikon uh, D750 with the Nikon 14 to 24 f 2.8. I've got that zoomed into 18 millimeters. Got the aperture set to f 2.8, um, and it's on bulb mode. It's going to be controlled by this intervalometer, and the ISO is 640. Now, what I'm going to do is um, set the intervalometer going. Um, actually, I'm going to set it on indefinite in other words it'll keep going until i come back and stop it so what that means is i don't really know how many shots i'm going to get and it depends how how long i'm away because i'm going to go and shoot something else uh, in another location i'm just going to leave all this here doing its work so um, yeah i've done a test shot first thing i'd always do is uh, line up a test shot make sure i've got my focus right uh, my composition right, level, camera level, all those sorts of things. Um, and from there, I'll, um, I'll just set it going. So I'll set that going um, firstly, then I'll come back. When I come back, I'll stop that and then I'll change my settings and do some light painting on the building. So I'll run through that later. So let's get into it. So as mentioned, I'm setting my camera to f2.8. Now, because I'm going to be shooting three minute exposures, I need to set my camera to bulb mode and I'm going to use an external intervalometer to control the camera. I'm setting my ISO to 640. I set it to 640 because at three minute exposures at f2.8, I need to make sure my ISO is quite a bit lower. Okay, the settings on the intervalometer. So firstly, I'm gonna have a two second delay at the beginning. Then I'm going to set the, how long I want the shutter speed to be open. Now for me, I'm going to set this at three minute exposures because I like that particular setting for my star trials and I'm gonna shoot a number of them. Something a little bit different tonight, what I'm going to do, and I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, oh, by the way, the interval here, this is gonna be set at the very shortest possible and that's one second. I can't go any less than that, but I'm gonna set it at one second one second between each shot. Now it's going to ask me here what I want to enter in as far as the number of shots. Now normally I would set a number uh, such as one, two, three, four, five, but for this time I'm going to set it at these horizontal dots which means it will just keep going until I'm finished. Now that's a little bit unusual so it could go for an hour, it could go for two hours. I'm just going to leave it running and see what happens. So that what that means is it's going to be shooting uh, three minute exposures with one second delay between each shot at f2.8 at ISO 650 until I actually come back and press the stop button on the intervalometer. Okay, 35 images, three minute exposures times 35. My maths is not so good this time of night, um, but they look good, really good. There's a couple of shots there where my car, when I drove up, uh, the car sort of lit the background a little bit, but you know, I can, I can work through that. Yeah, pretty good. Now I've got to do light painting on the foreground. So I'll get to that. All right, so there we go. I've just taken 15 images, light painting around the various angles of this building. Now, I, my settings for that were f8, 15 second shutter speed at ISO 640. Now, I shot at f8, 
mainly because of the color of this building. It's, it's, there's a lot of a white sort of a wash over the building and it's quite reflective. Um, so I didn't want to overexpose it too much and uh, so I closed down the aperture a little bit more. Um, and hopefully that works out okay. So now let's get back into the edit suite and see if we can put this whole thing together. Well, I can't begin to tell you how thrilled I was to be out there last night at the old state school shooting the star trails. And it's been a while that I've really wanted to bring this particular tutorial to you guys because lots of people ask me about star trails. And I do it a little bit differently to what the majority of people shoot. And uh, so let's have a look on the computer. I'll get into the images now and let's get started. Here we go, we're starting off in Lightroom as we normally do. What you're seeing here, by the way, is a test shot that I shot just to get my composition and my angles, etc. right. This is just a 20 second exposure at ISO 3200 just to give me a look at what I'm shooting. But as far as editing goes, here we have uh, our star trails. Now you can see these are three minute exposures as I suggested and you can see when you zoom in on the edge you'll see that there's a fair bit of star trailing but if you go in to the middle over here somewhere uh, just up here by the way there's hardly any star trailing that's because that's the pivot point around which all the stars are moving. Now before I go on I just want to run through the settings on these star trails. Here we go uh, you'll notice I've increased the exposure a little bit and contrast drop the highlights increase the whites now oh and on this one I've minus two on the blacks I don't often do that but I must have for some reason now um, I'm going to add noise reduction at 20 for luminance 20 plus contrast and I've removed chromatic aberration and I've also enabled profile corrections now I know quite a few people that will never enable profile corrections for star trials because they get a moray pattern um, I have never personally had that issue, but if you do get a moray pattern, which is like a, uh, I don't know how to, a shimmering pattern through your images when they blend it together, that is often the case. So if you see that, disable your lens profile corrections. Uh, and so there you have it, there are my settings at f2.8, it says 181 seconds, that's three minutes, 18 millimeter focal length at ISO 640. Uh, there's 35 images of the star trials then we've got quite a few light painted images and you can see them here now obviously with these I stopped down to f8 as I mentioned 15 seconds at ISO 640 so I left this ISO for the same for all of these images the foreground shots and the background shots and you can see here these are my images various light painted ones and in fact 15 of them now it's quite possible I'm not going to use all of them but anyway, speaking about doing that, I'm going to start with my first selected image and go right to the end and select the last one by holding down shift on the keyboard. And you can see there, there's one I don't want to use because I've obviously looked at that and thought, nah, that one's no good as far as editing. But if, apart from that, I'm going to edit all the rest. Now, there's heaps of images selected there. I'm going to right click on any one of them edit in open as layers in Photoshop now this is going to take a fair bit of time an eternity especially if you're on a slow computer system because I've got so many images to open in Photoshop but because of the wonders of video production I'm going to go straight there right now all right so here we are in Photoshop and you can see here all of the layers that have been opened now it's a bit daunting when you see so many layers open in Photoshop. One of the big attractions and reasons why I like to shoot longer shutter speeds for my star trails is to alleviate having hundreds of files open in Photoshop. Now you can see there's quite a few here, but if you were shooting at uh, 20 or 30 second shutter speeds, you would have mega amount of images here to process and it becomes very unmanageable. Anyway, Let's have a look at these images. Now, what I want to do, this, this will give us a little bit of encouragement, I hope. What I want to do is actually select all of the images. So I can do that by holding in shift and clicking the top and the bottom and go up to select all images. There's a few other ways of doing it. And what I'm going to do is make my blend mode from normal to lighten on every single image. And there we have a really, really rough look at what this final 
composition is going to look like. Now that, that looks pretty good just as is. Now I've got to do a fair bit of work on this before it's ready to, to show. But having said that, I, I like to do that at the beginning because it just gives me a feel of, yes, this is on the right track and I think it might come out okay. First thing I'm going to do, however, I'm going to uh, disable all of the star trail layers and they're on the top here. You can see them all, I'm turning them all off. I'm going down, there's quite a few more, so let's turn them all off and go right down to there. Now, all we're seeing here at this point are these bottom, there's about 15 or might be about 14, I can't remember how many there is in total, uh, of the foreground that I lit. And the reason you're still seeing star trails is because each one of these has a few stars in it. And the reason I'm here is to get rid of those stars. So let's just go down to the bottom one. Here you see where I'm coming to. Now there's no um, star trails because I've turned them off. And what I want to do is create a mask. So here I am, I have a layer mask on this particular layer. Now I've got two layers enabled and that only reason I've done that is so I can see a little bit more around the edge there. But I'm only working on this one layer and what I'm going to do is grab my paintbrush tool over here, opacity of 100% and a hard brush and a fairly large hard size brush here we go and you'll see what happens here i'm just going to rub out that sky oh hang on let's just undo that one for a second oh and that one i'm sorry i've got too many layers open and the reason for that is i can't see what i'm doing now um now that brush is a bit big so let's just make it a bit smaller just so i can get in here and get rid of these stars now it's hard to see those stars this is one of the problems you face so i'm going to zoom in using my navigator here so I can see that roof line a little bit better. Hard to see that roof line, but here we are. I'm getting rid of the stars. And it's easy at this point in time to actually rub out something you don't want to rub out. So that's why I'm being a little bit more careful. And in fact, what I'm doing is I'm making my brush quite a bit smaller, but it's still a hard brush. And I'm actually rubbing out where I can see stars and I'm not worried too much about anything else at this particular point in time because it's only the light. When I'm using a light and blend mode, I'm wanting to get rid of the stars, but I don't want to get rid of the foreground. And if I happen to rub out the roof line of the, of the house, for example, then I'm in a bit of trouble because I've got to try and get it back again later. And uh, you know, it causes a few problems. So let's just go through this. Pretty sure that's going to look okay. I'll just enable one of the layers of the star trails and you can see there what that actually looks like and what I've rubbed out. Not too bad at all. Okay, let's move on. So what I'm going to do now is enable the next layer and just copy that layer mask by holding down the Alt key on my keyboard. So there it is. And once again, we see all of these um, stars disappear once I go down and copy that layer mask. You'll also see uh, the transparency of the sky there. So here we go. Let's just keep going. Now I'm sure I could do this all together, but I don't want to do that because I don't want you guys to see me doing stuff and think, well, what did he just do? It's much easier to see it done one by one. I realize it's a bit slower doing it this way, but it's a much better teaching tool, I believe. All right, there we go. Now, if I, it looks pretty bad. It looks like a dog's breakfast there at the moment. But once I enable the star trail layers, there you go, it starts to look pretty good. Now, of course, you can still see uh, a lot of the light painting tools and things like that. And, you know, we don't want those in there. So what I've got to do now is go in one by one and just work out which layers they're on. So let's go back to our first layer. This one's good. There's no light painting uh, uh, torch in that one. This one though, have a look at this. It's got the torch there. So all I need to do is grab my brush. I'll make it a soft brush and make it a little bit bigger. Let's go about there. Still on 100% opacity, remember, because I want to make sure that I rub it out completely. And just, just rub it out. There we go. That's what I want. Now it looks a bit funny until I turn a background layer back on and then suddenly you can't see it anymore. And it makes sense now, doesn't it? Let's turn that one off again. Yeah, much better. Yep, that's good. So let's go to the next one. Uh, what have we got there? No, that's pretty good. And the next one, that's good as well. 
next one okay so this layer here has a bit you can see it there there's a light painting torch so i must have been in line with the camera at this point so i just click on the layer mask rub it out easy as that let's keep going oh there's another one so you can see what i'm doing here i'm just rubbing out on the layer where the torch is pretty straightforward isn't it there's another one so we're going really well here we'll just do them one at a time and get rid of them okay that's a tree now what i what i noticed here now i don't know if i'm going to use this tree but let's just i've just changed my brush back to white because i want to brush in more of that tree and just have a bit of a look at it because i actually rubbed it out with my mask i might not use that tree yet so i'll just leave it sitting there like that and just see how we go later let's move to the next one that's good next one that's good next one yeah okay now you can see on this layer there we have let me just zoom in and show you this i'll get in a bit closer you can see there we've got um, definite light there i've got to get rid of that so i'll go back to my black brush over here rub it out remember 100 percent opacity it has to be 100 percent, otherwise it won't work too well okay let's keep going let's move on um, get it back there so we can see it yes there's another one easy to spot there's our torch there let's get rid of that next one another one so you can see it's pretty easy to spot the torch you can see where i'm lighting that's lighting that tree there oh speaking of that tree by the way that's another one i'm going to have to rub the tree back in because it looks like i've rubbed some of the tree out so let's just have a look and see what what we've got there let me just go to a bigger brush it'll make it a bit quicker just so I can see what I've actually rubbed out and what I don't want to rub out. There you go. You can see that, that some of that tree I'd rubbed out and I may want to keep. So I'm just putting it back in. Just like that. And when I, just watch this, when I enable a layer for a background, suddenly that tree that I just rubbed in, it starts to make sense again. You with me? So take that back away. And we've got one more layer down the bottom here. That one's okay that's not causing me any dramas at all okay so what I'm going to do now is enable all of those layers and the sky layers let's just go right up back to the top again so all of our layers now oh now here's something we've got to we've got to sort out all of our layers are enabled but the torch has gone yet this car headlights we've got to get rid of those so let's work out what layer they're on oh there we go for some reason a car went past and it might not have been me it might have been somebody else's car on this layer which is about halfway through never mind i'm just going to put a layer mask on there get my brush like i did before and rub it out there we go there's a fair bit of lens flare you can see the blue in the sky there in, in the ground i want to get rid of all of that because i don't like lens flare that's not intentional don't know about this one yeah it's a bit there see how that's rubbing out because it went part right past now there's still obviously a layer at least one layer that's being um, affected by another light source so let's just see if we can find where that one is so that one's good oh there we go so those two layers right next to each other so i'm going to add a layer mask to that one and do the same thing and you can see my brush here i'm just rubbing it out now this is not affecting any of the other layers because the other layers are separate there's still a light there which i'll have to find a little bit there a bit of the lens for it. obviously the light of the car has gone straight into the camera now there's a bit of light here here and here i've still got to find those ones so where are they let's just go for a bit of a journey and hunt them down okay so here we go there's the culprit now it's on this one i've actually done a layer mask on and i just didn't do enough of a layer there we go sometimes you, you you sort of second guess yourself a little bit when you're doing this and you've still got to find where it is ah oh, there we go gee oh, that's the very first one i should have looked there first never mind here we are so i'm just going to rub that out doesn't affect the building because the building is not on that layer so i'm going over the building but the building is irrelevant to this particular bit okay that's awesome fantastic now i can turn all these back on again let's do that and we can get our star trials back 
right down to oh, where are they that's they're pretty long star trials there's there's well 35 of them all right now what i want to do is have a bit of a look at these images and work out if there's anything that i don't want uh, on the building and then i can just rub it out that's as simple as that so this comes down to a be a bit of an artistic choice now i'm looking at these layers thinking oh yeah that's that's okay that's okay that's pretty good um, this one here i'm going to rub a, a bit of this this grass over here i'm gonna make the brush a little bit bigger uh, remember it's a soft brush and i'm still on 100 percent opacity uh, so if i make the brush bigger i like to feather the edges so in other words i'm going to go down make my my image smaller just feather it it's only affecting the grass on the edge there not anything else and you might think oh yeah that's not much of a change but I'll tell you what, it's enough of a change to make a difference to the final output. So I'm going through them one by one here just to show you what I'm, what I'm doing and what I want to do with each image. Now that one, I don't need that. That's, doing no, that's not adding anything to my image, so I'm going to leave that one out. And that one, I don't think I want that tree in the background, so I'm going to leave that one out. That's the foreground. I, I, it's, a, it's a bit heavy at the front there. Um, so I think what I'll do there is the same thing I just did a minute ago with the large brush. Just feather the edge of it. See how I'm feathering it? So it's it's not as bright as it was before, but I haven't actually rubbed the whole image out. You guys will have a different take on this to what I have. And that's good because we want our creative juices to be different to each other. If everyone had the same taste, this would be a pretty boring old world, wouldn't it? All right, now let's have a look at our total image. Clo a bit closer in and just make sure we're happy with what we've got here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. The building looks nice and sharp. Now remember I shot this building at f8. So it's going to be sharp. There's still a bit of light back there in the background. Yeah, I don't know where that's coming from. I thought I went through all these images, but you know, it's so easy to miss something. There's also a bit of lens flare. Remember how I mentioned the lens flare there before? These things can be really hard to locate sometimes and you have to really uh, search because you've got a, an image that is full of detail. So I'm just making sure that lens flare is gone out of my image here. There's a little bit there I missed. Often when you zoom in on the image, that's when you notice what imperfections may be there. And some of you are probably thinking, what? I'm rubbing over this image and it's only rubbing out that bit. It's because I'm working on that particular layer that the light source was actually on. And that's what you have to do. That's why these things are a little bit meticulous, but the concept is simple. It's not a complicated principle. The application can be as complex as we want it to be. Now, I don't want it to be complicated because I like things to be simple. And the whole premise of what I'm doing here is to make this image as simple as I possibly can. Here we have an image which I love. I think it looks fantastic. Without going into any other great detail, I'm going to flatten this image now because otherwise we'll be here for the next three hours working on minute details. When you do your image, you can work on the minute details if you'd like, because uh, they might be really important to you, and, and that's fine. I mean, you, you, can, um, you can do what you like on your own image, but for me, I'm really happy. Now, one of the things, and I'll reiterate this, I've said it many times before, when shooting images like this where your intention is to stack multiple shots, one on top of the other and some in front of the others, you cannot ever move your camera or tripod between any of the shots. If you do, this uh, image at the front here won't line up with the shadow of the background from the star trails and the individual images down below won't line up with each other and you're going to have a heck of a time trying to line them up. Alrighty, I'm going to do it. This is a massive file. It's a seven gigabyte file and um, I'm going to go up to layer flatten image yes and it says discard hidden layers yes i am and now it's going to flatten this whole thing down into one single layer as you can see that's 138 megabytes one single layer now i've done that very quickly i'm sure when you do something this large you will spend a whole lot more time looking at the intricate details but i wanted to show you how to do it it's not here about perfection it's more about showing you the image and the process of how to create it. But you know, I think that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is click, uh, do I want to save this? Yes, I do. And I'm going to 
click that and that will now take me back to Lightroom. And here we are in Lightroom. Now, if you have a look at this image, uh, we can look at it full screen by pressing F on the keyboard. Fantastic, love it. There you have it. That's the process that I use to create my star trials with a light painted foreground. All right, well, what do you think of that image? Now, I love it, and I guess I'm putting my heart and soul out there a little bit because I really attach myself to all of these images simply because it's a journey from start to finish. And you know, it's not just about getting an end result for me. It's about the whole process from being out there in the field and just scouting the locations and actually then the computer work here to accomplish what we see here as a final image. So thanks once again for watching. I really do appreciate that as always. And I love to chat with you guys down in the comments. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I'd be delighted to have you on board. So I've got a few more uh, tutorial videos up my sleeve and I know I'm running the risk of going over the same thing and repeating myself. But you know, I know that people need to hear the same thing over, I do. I need to hear the same thing over and over and over to actually get it to sink in. So what I'm endeavoring to do is to show you different locations to sort of spice it up a bit and make it a little bit more interesting. So hopefully that's what we'll get next time. So I'll look forward to seeing you then, won't be long, and uh, have a great week. See you next time.